Hello, Mr. Barton here. And in this video, I seek to answer the question, what different types of diagnostic questions are there? Because you might think to yourself, well, oh, it's a bit limited, this way of questioning. Oh, you'd be wrong, as I hope to show you in this video. So I'm just going to show it by a means of a, of a load of different examples. So here's one um, on solving linear equations. And I really like this because solving linear equations is one of those topics where there's a few different places students can go wrong in the process. So it's quite hard to isolate that specific misconception if you just give students a question and say which of these is, is the answer. However, look at this. Where in the process does the first error occur? You really get into the heart of the issue um, and allowing yourself to identify exactly where students' misconceptions lie. I love that style of question. What about this one as well? Now, adding fractions. If you think about the different skills that are involved in adding fractions, there's loads of them. So once again, if you just presented students with a question and said, which of these is the answer? Are you gonna be able to easily tell where in the process the, the mistake or the misconception lies? So it's much better to strip it back and identify can they get the first bit right? And then let's get that bit sorted. Now can they get the next bit right? So this question really does isolate. Do students have the knowledge to get the first step in the process right? So which of the following is a correct next step in answering the question? I'm a big, big fan of um, asking questions that way. I love this question. I know I'm saying this for every question, but I really do love this. What about this one? What is the size of the marked angle? So a circle theorems question. Now again, feel free to pause the video at any stage if you want to have a think about these. But if my maths is right, and often it isn't, I reckon the correct answer to this is D, not enough information. But it almost goes against every fiber of your being to think that that's the right answer. And that's what's brilliant about it because to choose D, you've got to be good enough to rule out A, B, and C. So you've got to avoid falling into the trap of thinking it's A because maybe if I um, they've got to add up to a right angle or B, or they look a bit like alternate angles. Is there some parallel lines in there? Or C, isn't it something to do with the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees? You've got to rule all of those out to conclude that these are the right answer. So don't be afraid to chuck in a few D, not enough information, and have it be either the right answer or the wrong answer. A really good way to improve the quality of the question. I put this one in there just to show you that it, they don't have to just be all number-based questions. You can have comprehension style questions in there. So this will be a question about sampling or questionnaires and, and identifying bias. So don't think you need to be limited to kind of number-based or, or algebra-based questions. Chuck some sentences in there, treat yourself. I love this as well. Which point would correctly represent the highlighted row to draw the cumulative frequency diagram? Now, if you think about cumulative frequency diagrams, when you ask those, when you when you set those for your kids to do, how long does it take? Five or ten minutes for them to draw one? Once again, there's so many places they can go wrong in the process. Here, we've got a way of quickly identifying one skill or one skill only. Can they correctly plot their points? And if not, where are they going wrong in that process? A really fast, efficient way of doing it. And the final example I'll show you, again, again is one of my favorites. You can never have too many favorites. Um, tree diagrams. Think about a tree diagram. A lot of the emphasis um, on teaching tree diagrams tends to be on what happens at the end of the branches. How do you get there? Do you multiply together? And then what happens when you combine things? Do you add probabilities or times them and so on? But there's no point focusing on that if students can't get this first bit right. So do students know where to place three sevenths? Do they want to place it anywhere? Do they want to place it in more than one location? Judging or looking at the answers that students give to this question tells you so much about their understanding of tree diagrams and then allows you to build on the next skills on top of that. So there's just a quick summary of a few different types of ways you can ask diagnostic questions. And with a bit of imagination, there are hundreds of other ways that I won't even have considered. So just try it, think of a topic and just think of a clever way of asking a question that assesses one skill on one skill only. And I'll be back with more videos very shortly. Bye for now.